Hello everybody, March is Women's History Month and at our school, the OJCS, it's also Innovation Day at the end of the month. So I chose a picture book that's going to do a double whammy here because not only are we learning about an important woman in history, Canadian history particularly, but we're also, she was an internationally renowned aeronautical engineer. So we're really doing a double whammy here. So this book's called Meet Elsie McGill by Elizabeth McLeod, illustrated by Mike Dayus. Elsie McGill looked over the huge airplane factory. She knew she had to get these Hawker Hurricanes built as quickly as possible. There was a war on overseas. People were depending on her. Is that plane almost ready to ship to Britain? It'll be all set to go in an hour, ma'am. Elsie still had to, the perf to perfect the plans and make sure the workers were assembling the planes correctly. It was a race against the clock. What a huge challenge. But Elsie just got to work. Elsie was born in Vancouver, British Columbia in 1905. She had two older half-brothers, Eric and Frederick, and an older sister, Helen. Elsie and Helen were together so much the family called the pair Helnessy. One hundred years ago, many people thought girls shouldn't have as much schooling as boys. When Elsie was little, Canadian women were not even allowed to vote. But Elsie's parents believed girls should get a good education. No wonder Elsie's mother was one of the first women in Canada to become a judge. Hell no, see, let's get going. We have a meeting to attend. That's the mom, and she's carrying a sign that says votes for women. And then one of them says, I've got the handouts. Coming, mother. Elsie's parents encouraged her to study hard. She even took drawing lessons from Emily Carr, who later became a famous painter. Elsie was always repairing lamps, clocks, and other gadgets for her family. Elsie loved figuring out how things worked, so she decided to study engineering. Hey, Miss Fixit, Eric knocked this over and now the switch doesn't work. Maybe the wires are loose. I'll have a look. Elsie impressed her professors and fellow students with how smart she was and how hard she worked. Thanks to her childhood art classes, she was especially good at drafting or drawing plans. But Elsie also liked to laugh and have fun. She made a lot of friends at school. What is she doing here? These are modern times. Get with it. Miss, are you in the right class? I certainly am. I can't wait to get started. So it's all men in her class, except for her. During the summers, Miss Fixit worked in machine shops repairing motors. She learned more about many kinds of engines hands-on. In 1927, Elsie became the first woman in Canada to graduate with a degree in electrical engineering. Are we ready to turn on the power? Let's double check the insulators or our test results will be shocking. Good one, Elsie. You're a live wire. That Miss McGill could really go places. I hope she gets a chance. Later that year, Elsie began working for the Austin Company, an engineering firm in Pontiac, Michigan. She was a junior engineer and studied better ways to build cars. Elsie worked hard but was often given unimportant tasks. She didn't enjoy her job very much. I finished the test report. Is there anything else I can work on? No, nothing for you right now. How about you go tidy up the workroom? The company was also involved in the airplane business. Elsie soon became fascinated by aeronautics, or how planes fly, so Elsie decided to study aeronautical engineering at the University of Michigan. She wanted to learn how to design and make airplanes. Elsie passed all her courses for her master's degree in 1929. The day before her graduation, something serious happened. The word bubble here says, just look at those planes. That's the future of travel. 
Elsie woke up with no feeling in her legs. She tried to move them but couldn't. Doctors told Elsie she had polio, a disease that can sometimes paralyze people or even kill them. Today we have a vaccine that protects against polio. I'm sorry, Miss McGill, but you'll probably never walk again. That's not going to stop me. I've got things to do. While still in hospital, Elsie was presented with her master's degree. She was the world's first woman with a graduate degree in aeronautical engineering. It took Elsie three years to recover from her illness. She was eventually able to walk again using a cane. Meanwhile, Elsie was determined to keep working. She wrote magazine articles about planes and continued to study them. Have you finished another article? I'd love for you to read it, but first hand me my canes. I think I can do more steps today. Soon after she recovered, Elsie's career really took off. She was offered a job at Fairchild Aircraft Limited in Longueuil, Quebec in 1934. At that time, Canada was in the middle of the Great Depression and many people were out of work. Elsie knew she was lucky to get a job, and this time doing real work on the plane she loved. This will be Canada's first all-metal plane. It's got to be right. Elsie tested the company's airplanes in wind tunnels. She checked designs and did stress tests on the planes. She also worked on float planes, which can take off and land on water. The stress test is a success. This wing design is stronger. Let's get ready to turn up the wind. Now that we'll have a better water landing. In 1938, Elsie got a new job in Thunder Bay, Ontario at the Canadian Car and Foundry Company. Elsie became its chief aeronautical engineer. She would be in charge of all airplane engineering work at the factory. Never before had a woman held such an important job working with planes. I think I'm going to like it here, she says. One of Elsie's first projects was designing a plane known as the Maple Leaf Trainer II. She totally reworked the design of an older plane, making the wings stronger and changing the wheels and tail to make the plane more stable. Hers was the first plane designed by a woman. This new design is safer and much easier to fly. Say, you're a pretty good engineer for a woman. No, I'm a pretty good engineer, period. Although Elsie had many projects to look after, the Maple Leaf Trainer 2 was soon ready for testing. Most airplane designers let other people test their planes. Not Elsie. She couldn't fly them herself because her legs were too weak after her illness, but she rode along on the test flights. Let's get going. Wheels up. You wouldn't catch me going on a test flight. She isn't afraid of anything. The first test flight was especially dangerous. If any part of the plane failed, it could crash, but Elsie insisted flying was the best way for her to see how a new airplane was working. Elsie loved her job designing planes, but the world was about to change. Elsie, this plane handles like a dream. Good, that's how I designed it. In September 1939, Germany invaded Poland. That started World War II, the first war in which airplanes were really important. Over the next few years, many other countries would become involved in the war. On one side was a group of countries that included Germany, Italy, and Japan. On the other side were nations such as Britain, Canada, the Soviet Union, and the United States. German bombers, 12 o'clock. They're no match for our hurricanes. By July of 1940, Germany had conquered most of Europe and wanted to invade Britain. To do that, it needed to destroy Britain's air force, so Germany started heavily bombing Britain and its airfields. Britain needed more planes, lots of them. Britain especially wanted fighters called Hawker Hurricanes, and back in Canada, Elsie was ready to build them. Using plans from Britain, Elsie built the machines and tools that would manufacture the Hurricane's 1,500 different parts. 
Elsie decided that each individual part would be identical for every plane. That way the pieces could be assembled quickly. Identical parts also meant planes could be repaired using parts from other planes. This would help the fighters get back in the air quickly, ready for battle again. Elsie, we've got to make these parts as quickly as possible. I know, but each piece must be perfect. The pilots' lives depend on it. Thanks to Elsie, 40 hurricanes were delivered to England in the summer of 1940, five months ahead of schedule. To build all these planes, the factory staff increased from 500 to 4,500. About half of them were women. Many of the women had not worked in a factory before, so Elsie had to train them. It was tough, detailed work. Assembling each plane took 800 steps. But Elsie inspired and respected her workers. She knew how to encourage them. Between 1939 and 1943, Elsie's team built 1,451 hurricanes. I'm tired and there's still so much to do. If we work hard, we can get this done. You're helping Canada win the war. Yes, let's bring our boys home. Hurricane fighters were also used in the Soviet Union during the war. This meant Elsie had to design a version of the plane that could fly in icy weather. She added skis so the plane could land on snow and fitted de-icing systems on the propeller's tail and wings. Hot dog, it started on the first try. Glad to hear it. Our planes need to start in a flash, even when it's 20 below. Back in the 1940s, it was very unusual for a woman to be in charge of such a technical project. Elsie became famous around the world. In 1942, kids got to read about her incredible achievements when she starred in a comic called Queen of the Hurricanes, Elsie McGill. Wow, that Elsie McGill is amazing. Yeah, she's a real superhero. In 1943, Elsie started her own company in Toronto, helping airlines and companies that built airplanes with their designs. Two years later, World War II ended. Canada's side had won, thanks in part to Elsie's hurricanes. Canada's great, great contribution to victory has been made possible by the unbroken partnership of her warriors and her workers. We won the war? Yes, we did! In 1945, the United Nations organization was set up to help countries better work together. A year later, Elsie became the first female technical advisor to the UN's International Civil Aviation Organization. Airplanes were becoming important for moving people, not only within Canada, but around the world. Elsie helped make rules that made air travel safer for everyone. I'm calling this meeting of the Stress Analysis Committee to order. Gentlemen, you have my latest report. Let's begin. In the 1960s, women's rights became Elsie's main focus. Elsie's career had flown high for decades. She'd always known there weren't many women in engineering, but Elsie had begun to see more clearly the obstacles that were holding them back. She encouraged women to get involved in politics in order to push for changes and make things faster. Equal rights, women unite. It's time for things to change. In 1967, the Royal Commission of the status of, on the Status of Women in Canada was created. Elsie was named one of the commissioners. This important government group heard from people all over Canada about discrimination against women. The commission worked long hours. Sometimes people made fun of their work. It would have been easy to get discouraged, but Elsie never gave up. In 1970, Elsie and the other members of the commission gave Canada's federal government a list of ways to ensure equal opportunities for women. Many of their suggestions became law. So this man is shouting, nobody cares, go bake a cake. And they're saying, my boss only pays me half of what the men make for doing the exact. Sir, even if you are her boss, you are not the boss here. You tell him, Elsie. People are arguing. Elsie was already known all over the world for her pioneering work in aeronautics. Now she had become one of the most important people in Canada's women's movement. 
She received many awards and honors for both achievements. Even after Elsie died in 1980, she continued to be given awards. She also had new ones named after her, including the Elsie. The Elsie McGill Awards are given out each year to recognize achievements of women in aviation. Elsie blazed a trail for women in science and engineering. She also made Canada a better place for women, for girls, and for everyone. Elsie showed that the sky is the limit if you're determined to get down to work. I'm going to invent a solar power plane. Like Elsie said, anything's possible. I love this story. I, it's just so perfect for our month of March. I hope you all enjoyed it too, and I hope you feel inspired, inspired to create, inspired to design, inspired to pursue your scientific ideas, your creative ideas. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.